Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. And we're pretty excited because we're starting to get viewers send us video emails and their questions. I have one here and I'm going to share it with you. Mr. TIG, is there a machine that does six, TIG, or MIG? All in one for under $1,000? That's my budget. Well, great. Joe, thanks for your question. And what we decided to do was go out and research and see if we could find you that machine. Now, we can't find you an industrial machine, so I just want you to know that this is for the weekend warrior, the guy that has projects in his garage, or just kind of a part-time light industrial person. We found a utility type machine for somewhere around $1,000, and we're gonna share it with you. This machine does MIG, TIG, and stick. Now typically what I found in the past is anytime you have a multi-purpose machine something gets sacrificed. I don't know what that is yet but we're going to test this machine and I'm going to give you the results. Now we're going to start off and we're going to do TIG first. We're going to make this into three segments. So I'm going to do TIG first and the second segment is going to be MIG and the third segment is going to be stick welding. Uh, definitely I have a lot of years in TIG welding I don't have a lot of years in MIG and stick, so there's going to be a lot of you out there in the audience that are going to be able to share comments with me on it. I'll give you my best effort. So, got a machine here, it's called an MTS-210. And basically the description of it is, it is a TIG, MIG, and stick machine with a 35% duty cycle at 200 amps. It doesn't have AC on it, so you're not going to be able to do aluminum. And keep that in mind, aluminum is a, is a big feature when you're looking at this. So it's not going to be able to do aluminum on TIG welding. It runs off of 220 or 230. It'll read either 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Uh, the input is 36 amps, so you can certainly hook it up in your garage. This start mechanism is not a high frequency start. So first of all, you're going to see that it's a lift start. And the range is it'll light off at 10 amps and go up to 200 amps. I've got a foot control on this, so we do have variability, so that's a plus. Now, the torch that came with this machine wasn't one that I'm fond of, so I put my own torch on it, and uh, you'll notice that it's got a 9-style torch, and it's going to have a gas lens on it. So just know that I did that for my own purpose. Okay, one of the things that's really important on the setup of this machine is is it easy to use? Is it easy to set up? And so you'll hear me use the word intuitiveness. Can I look at that without looking at the instructions? Because most of us do things that way. So I'm going to walk around and show you how I set this thing up. And it was pretty intuitive. Now let's get started. Okay, I didn't look at the setup instructions on purpose. Because again, I want to know how intuitive it is. So I want to start off with a TIG torch. And this particular TIG torch is the one that I provided. This hole right here is a DENS 35 connection, and that's the diameter of it. Now, if you'll notice, it has a minus here. Make sure you put your TIG torch on the minus. Okay, second feature is your ground. And again, it's solid. It also has a DENS 35 connector. It's the plus. If you get them reversed, you're not going to get variable control and and uh, you just, you'll see that it's not working very well at all. Okay, third feature. This so right here is a plug-in for my foot control. It gives me variable foot control. Highly recommend using this feature. And the fourth feature on here is your argon. And this is kind of a neat feature because it's a quick disconnect, but this is argon in. Okay, so now we have the machine set up. We have it plugged in, it's running off of 220. Now let's go up to the top end of this machine because it kind of looks confusing. It, it really isn't. When you start eliminating things like wire speed, uh, diameters, MIG voltage, start eliminating everything that has to do with MIG welding. Pretty soon you're left with only a couple of features. So I want you to take notice of this one right here. There's a TIG torch here, but there's also a MIG gun and there's also a stick electrode holder. So look at the little cartoon there and make sure that you just set it on the right one. Okay, so we're on the TIG torch here. We're ready to go TIG. 
There's a feature here called 2T, 4T. I'm going to give you the short version of this. Put it on 2T for your foot control. Put it on 4T if you're going to use a button of any kind. But we're not going to use that, so put it on 2T. Uh, the next feature, red light comes on for a short time. It tells you that you can adjust this screen right here. And this is your post flow, your argon post flow. It'll give you up to 10 seconds post flow when you finish welding. So if you're welding steel or stainless steel, usually you're somewhere around five, six, seven seconds. If you're welding titanium, you're gonna use a full 10. So post flow, I'm gonna run it right around six seconds. And that screen will give up shortly. All right, now this screen right here is actually the amperage. So this machine will go all the way up to 200 amps. When I do the lift start, now the lift start is kind of tricky. You actually have to touch the part where you're about to weld and it'll initiate a circuit. When you lift, the arc will initiate and it'll initiate at 10 amps. The foot control allows you to go all the way up to 200 amps. So that's really just about it for this machine. So let's go ahead and put my safety gear on and we'll get started. Okay, remember this is a lift start. So you touch the part and it has to make everything well grounded. Initiate the arc. Now the argon is critical in that it needs to flow before you lift the torch. Okay, so I've got arc initiation. Good variable control. It's welding just fine. I'm using somewhere around 80 and 125 amps. You know, the old rule of thumb, one amp per thousandth of thickness applies. So I'm just welding on some steel. It's wetting out pretty nicely. So it's just a dab, dab. There's no hurry. Travel speed is not terribly important. You don't have to get in a hurry. It's a clean process. You can see it's welding pretty nice. I'm running about 15 to 20 CFH of argon. Now the, the gauge that came with this machine, or I should say the regulator for argon, it's registered in liters per minute. So I kind of cross-referenced it to 15 to 20 CFH of argon. Okay, well I'm going to come to an end, slow it down, back off, and re-solidify. And hold the post-flow on there for five seconds. Okay, we just finished welding in the, uh, the first part of the welding segment. I was using 125 thousandths thick plate and I created a lap weld. So I'm, I'm using about 125 amps. And again, I use the, uh, the lift start instead of the high frequency start. It's a little tough to get used to, but uh, I'm so used to high frequency start, I, I try to hit the foot pedal and have the arc start. So the key to it is make sure that you touch the part. That starts the circuit. Now you also need the argon to flow for about two seconds before you lift your tungsten and hopefully you don't leave any tungsten in there. Now, I didn't see any in this, but uh, it is a lift start, so a little tough to get used to. Now, I went from 125 thousandths thickness, where I was using 125 amps, to I dropped down to about 60 amps, and I was welding this tubing. Now, this is 4130 curl moly tubing. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty in the arc starts in a couple of places. Again, it was just my habits getting used to it. I wanted to show you, I've got two samples here and I want you to compare the two. Now, this particular sample, I used an industrial machine and this particular machine had arc initiation, high frequency, all the whistles and bells. This machine is our, uh, what I call a utility type welding machine. Again, we're looking at a thousand dollar budget. So just compare the two and see that you can get some pretty darn good results for the money. Now, we're going to do a full evaluation sheet on this machine, and we're going to be able to offer it to you on weld.com. And this concludes uh, the first part of the testing. 
uh, video number one on this. Now we're going to go next week to number two and it's going to have uh, MIG welding on it. You're also going to be able to get the information on well.com. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.